Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. On this episode, let's talk about roofing and roof repairs as Helping Seniors TV program host Joe Steckler talks with Tom Priami, managing partner of Pit Crew Roofing. You'll get good advice on taking the best care of your roof. Welcome to this edition of Helping Seniors, the uh, television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. I, I'm really pleased to have my guest today, Tom Priami, who is the uh, one of the three owners of uh, pet crew roofing, but as, as we've discussed before the show, you're a lot more than just a roofing company, and, and I think it's extremely important for Tom to talk about what else they can do and how they can serve you uh, through their total company, because it's important when you get in the areas of seniors, and uh, we'll talk about roofs and seniors and neglect and, and all that kind of stuff, and how how, how you bring an extra element of, of assistance to seniors. And I, I didn't even realize that until you and I talked, Tom. But welcome aboard. Well, thank you. Appreciate Making, it, Joe. Glad to have you here. Uh, you know, w- w- we get a lot of calls for roofers, Tom, and what's the best way to select a roofer? You, you just don't go to the yellow pages, I don't think. <laughs> well, you know, the yellow pages uh, it used to be a, a, an important means of finding what you need. But today with all the different sources, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, a lot of times now you need to kind of narrow down the search to number one, you want to find somebody local that understands your particular needs. Um, the internet is a wonderful tool. Uh, there's a lot of information on it. Uh, you can do a lot of research, a lot of background information on the type of company that you want to do business with. Uh, a great source is Uh, the Better Business Bureau. Number one, anybody that is going to be a reputable company of any magnitude that you would probably want to do business with would at least have uh, a Better Business Bureau rating. Right. So that's important to, even if that is the minimum amount of research that you want to do, make sure that they're A plus rated. Look at the reviews that, that are on the Better Business Bureau. You know, it's unsolicited. These people are going to either put positive or negative responses on there. If they put negative responses, you're going to see, you know, what the resolutions were for those particular companies. Very important when you're dealing with your home and you have people on your property that they're licensed and insured. Uh, This can be, number one, you can ask the contractor specifically for the documentation. You want to make sure that you have possession of it to some level. What happens? If you have somebody perform work on your property and, and an accident occurs and you don't have a licensed contractor doing that service. Well, that's where it falls back on you, the homeowner. And uh, it, can be, it can be a lot more detrimental to the homeowner than they would ever even imagine could happen. I know. Um, when somebody comes to your home and they knock on your door just to say hi, they're a guest of the home. Your homeowner's insurance protects you under those types of situations. Once you contract somebody to be at your home, it is now the responsibility of the homeowner to make sure that the appropriate coverages are provided once you sign that agreement that that person has the right licensing and insurance to cover them under peril of either property and or personal injury. Uh, there, it's a slippery slope when the insurance company says, hey, this roofer fell off my roof, but he didn't have insurance. And they say, well, you, in, you, know, you contracted this particular individual, and there might be a lack of coverage for that individual who then can turn around and sue you as an individual. It's a very scary situation. It could be very expensive and or death in some cases. There, there's but many Tom- cases. Seniors are often afraid to ask that question because they don't want to hurt somebody's feeling. Oh, remember, you're the boss. When, right. when, when you're the homeowner and you're asking for our services, you, we work for you. If we are not willing to provide whatever information you want, then that's not the contractor for you. We should jump through any hoop or take any task that you request of us 
if we want to earn your business. Remember, we work for you, the homeowner. And so any demand you have is a reasonable demand because it's your demand. It's your home. It's your pride. It's where you come to every day. We're trying to make your home better. And we, you know, we're going to make a fee for it. So don't think that we're not going to get paid for our services. But for that, we have to earn that money. The, mo that the most embarrassing situation I'm going to have, I've ever seen was a, I, I had come into a couple of submarines and I had another guy here and lived in Melbourne. And he had commanded a submarine and they had the big uh, uh, hurricane several years ago. And everybody was coming through and going to put new roofs on fixing. They were coming from all over the place. And this guy, called me up and admitted that he gave this guy upfront money to fix his roof and never saw him again. He said, Joe, how could I have been so dumb? I said, you did it. I said, you, you know, you, you, I said, just tell your story to other people so they don't do it too. Sure. Yeah. But now speaking in terms of what you do, but what types of roofing services do you provide? Well, there's so much to a roof. That's where it gets to, you need consultation. A lot of times people call us, say, I need a new roof. That is such a broad statement. Uh, there's a lot more education involved in selecting the roofing system that is best for you. There is no cookie cutter. Asking somebody for an estimate over the phone is not the appropriate means of finding out what you need for your house. Every house is individual. Every need is individual. Um, the, the array of products available in the market, uh, technology that's available, the time frame that you want to be in the house, these are all important factors. Um, the home is one of the biggest investments most people have. So you don't want to overspend on a roof, but you surely don't want to underspend on the roof. And just because a roof is inexpensive doesn't mean it's going to cost you the, le the less money over the span of time that you might be in that home. Um, there's shingle roofing, metal roofing, barrel tile roofing, cement tile, that would be the barrel tile aspect. And within those subcategories, there's a lot. So the first consultation you want to have with any contractor is to see what they offer and why they want to offer it. Maybe, maybe the homeowners have done some research and they know what they think they want but they need a little bit more education. So sit down, get a good feel for what you're trying to achieve. Tell them what you want the roof to do for you. And hopefully if you have a good contractor, they're going to guide you to the products that get you to that end result, financially and performance wise. A lot of people like the Key West tin roof look. Yes. What is your opinion as a roofer on <clears throat> The uh, last stability, durability, uh, cost, expense of a metal roof compared to a shingle and um, the uh, tile roof. Which do you prefer? I like metal roofing. I think it serves probably in this area. And remember, geographic location determines a lot of what is necessary. But it's tricky when you're talking metal roofs. Metal roofs come in different alloys from steel, which is like galvalume, which would be a zinc covered steel, to pure aluminum and many other alloys, like copper. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to design it. One of the things are though, when people are shopping metal roofs, because salesmen sometimes want to get the sale, they will mislead a little bit in this, in this field. Steel products are prone to rust and corrode when they're within a certain range. 1,500 feet is what the industry standard is of brackish water or a salt water source. Most metal manufacturers of steel-based roofing products will not cover a warranty if it falls within that range. Aluminum products, though they still oxidize, which is a type of corrosion, usually have a painted finish because it's so shiny. Um, so if you're within that parameter, that 1,500 feet, you need to kind of upgrade your product line a little bit into that, plus all your accessories have to uh, meet an aluminum type of application, meaning you have to use aluminum fasteners and or stainless steel fasteners because there is a corrosion factor if 
two alloys are too far apart on the periodic chart, they will cause a battery acid reaction. So it's very important to understand or have your contractor explain some of the technical aspects of how to design the roof. Now you might want that metal roof, but it might take, take it out of some people's budgets to get into the aluminum if they're within a certain parameter, but the steel roofs are wonderful if they're outside of that parameter. When, what does this parameter mean? 1,500 feet of a saltwater source. So let's say the, the ocean is our starting point. If you are 1,500 feet from that source so that, the, so that ocean water can reside or get onto the roof and will sit on it, the salt will corrode through imperfections. The zinc protects the product but when we're installing it, we're screwing through it, we're bending it, we're pulling it up on the roof, we're putting scratches, mars, and other aspects to it. Putting different types of finishes on it, of course, help protect it from that. And it's not something that's going to rust and corrode overnight. But when people are thinking about metal roofs, their perception is, this is going to last my lifetime, 50 years, 60 years. They don't. They don't. Because they are still a... Uh, there's a corrosion factor that can come in if it gets into the metal. A good example is you buy a car. It's wonderful when it comes off the factory floor, drive it around all today, you got your clear coat on it. Scratch the clear coat and the rust happens to form inside that scratch because you've broken through the protective barrier. The zinc and, and roofing is that protective barrier. Once that's compromised, then you can get creeper rust coming from that point and then it'll spread throughout the panels. So let's say if a person lived on the Indian River or on the Grand Canal, mm -hmm. I would, uh, if it lived right on those sources of water, it, a metal roof might not be the best thing. It is. You just have to design it in aluminum, pure aluminum. So now when it scratches or mars or any uh, drilling that we have to do, cutting, snipping, screwing down, uh, we don't have a steel base. We have a pure aluminum. And one of the a trick of the trade is when you're talking to a salesman and you would like to know their knowledge of it, it's important to know that steel-based products are measured in gauge. 24 being a thick gauge, 26 being a middle medium gauge, and 29 being a light gauge. So if anybody refers to the gauge of the product, they're talking a steel-based product even though it's, and a lot of times it's referred to as a galvalume. A loom, a lot of people have a perception that it's aluminum. It has some aluminum in it, but too many other alloys. Uh, if you're dealing with aluminum, pure aluminum, it's done in mill thickness, like a garbage bag. 032, 026, 032 would be your standard. So that's how you'll know the difference if you want to, you know, cross check the, you know, so the you just can't. sitting across from you. When you drive down the street and you see all these metal roofs, you don't know if they're aluminum or steel. Uh, in most cases, you won't know unless you put a magnet on it. I wonder how many people know that. Uh, very few. That's why the first thing I do when I sit down with someone is tell them as much information as I think they can handle at the time of the first visit. Okay, you mentioned you mentioned that about how much information a person could handle, but I think before we get go further and further further in the show, I want to talk about the comp your company capabilities because it was, as I worked through my question list here. There's one thing that you told me before the store showed it, and I want to make sure that our viewers understand uh, what all you can do that are related to roofing services. And because uh, if you're going to deal more with seniors, seniors are more apt to need your total service than just the roofing service. So explain that, because I think, I think this is a good thing for people to know. Wonderful. In the state of Florida, you have different licenses for for different trades. Roofing licenses, general contracting licenses, HVAC licenses, plumbing, uh, electrical. So we happen to have two licenses which tie together nicely. Uh, we have our roofing license, but we also have a uh, commercial building contractor's license, which would be a, a fancier way to say a general contracting license where we can build up to a three-story commercial building. Uh, the advantage we have over somebody that just has a roofing license is once you get into your roof project, sometimes the unforeseen get discovered. Uh, things that can hinder the project that are outside the scope of the traditional roofing contractor's technical abilities 
and or licensed abilities. Right. At that point, the project would literally be shut down until a general contractor was brought into the picture. That would be more research for you. That would be more um, uh, financial gain and time, uh, more permitting. These are things because of our licensing ability. We don't have to stop the project. We just have to resubmit for the additional work that we're going to do under our other license, which is already you know, part of our company. Uh, we have full staff that can handle anything below the trusses, which would, you know, could be mold, uh, mold mediation for drywall that you didn't notice during the project until you got it off. Um, we can do painting, uh, stains, flooring, windows, doors, all kinds of things that might get discovered during the project. It might be something that, hey, I didn't know, but yes, I need to address it because this is the time to do it. You know, it, we're a one-stop shop for those people. But are you, are you have employees that do those services? Yes, correct. We do. So it's not something you have to farm out to somebody. So you know what your people are capable of doing. Our people are capable of uh, handling all of that. There are times when some of the trades do require, you know, as a general contractor, we do subcontract as all general contractors okay. do. But we have a full staff and we range throughout the year from anywhere from 25 to 45 employees. I would just think in terms, because I know myself, I, uh, in doing some work, I've encountered what I thought was termite damage that turned out with just dry rot. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did this in the process of fixing my roof. Sure. And, uh, but I feel a lot more comfortable after having talked to you before the show today uh, when you explained to me what you could do. And I think this is, this is something more seniors need to know about it because once you start a project trying to, trying to uh, compartmentalize and put this piece here and figure out how you're gonna handle that, it's it's more than they want to want to want want to deal with. It's as you get older, it's hard to to make the pieces fit as you did when you were younger. And I'm, I'll, I'll admit that. Sure. And uh, and I've as, as I've gotten older, I've seen more and more and more of this, and know how important it is for especially the helping seniors organization. What we're trying to do is is put together a conglomerate of of, of providers as our sponsors, our partners that we feel comfortable if somebody comes to us, we can recommend them to go to these people to get their needs uh, uh, met. And I think that's just that's so important when you when you work with seniors. Yes, and absolutely. We, we just don't, we just don't, we just don't uh, know that. A good question here at number three you had here. How would a senior know when to call in an insurance claim to their carrier? It's not just when you have a damage. Correct. Anytime there's a situation, and a great example is, not that hail damage is very prevalent in Florida, but there are, there are situations, and being in Brevard County, there's been a couple situations where Palm Bay and Titusville were affected by this. By and hail? By hail. It's something that to the untrained person, they don't know that the roof has been compromised due to it, because it doesn't normally cause a leak. Anytime there is a weather event uh, that people ha have any issues at all, that there might be something that has hit their house or has done potential damage to the house, you should always call a licensed contractor to at least do an overview. There are claims that we are still doing from a storm that happened in 2013 because people were unaware that the hailstones that hit their particular homes uh, was actually depleting the life expectancy of the roof. Therefore, that is a qualified reason to turn a claim into the insurance company and is a covered peril on your policy. Uh, but the average person thinks, you know, oh, I, I it just hail hit the house. It's no different than saying, well, but your car, which you can see a lot more prevalent, gets the same hail hits on it. And you take that right away to go get the dents taken out. The car still drove fine but it depleted the life expectancy of the car and was physical damage caused by a natural act of God. Therefore, don't think that just because you don't have a leak, that you don't have something that is an insurable part of your policy that can get that rectified for you. Well, it's like when you see these, uh, um, not, uh, I wanna say, uh, the roof that appears to be scruffled or something, that's 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 a sign of age, yes. uh, roofing age, and 
and wind, wind can cause that damage. Yes, yes it can. And that, that automatically qualifies under your wind barrier. Actually, the aggregate coming off of the roof is not covered. Um, in order for the policy to uh, give you coverage for wind damage, which is the specific term that they use in the policy, there has to be a, an opening that was created. Now, an opening doesn't have to be a big hole. Exposing a shingle flipping up, exposing the nail fasteners that it's supposed to conceal is considered an opening. So when people have shingles that are flapped up around the roof, right. like from Matthew that just came through not too long ago, that is the type of wind damage that they would need to have assessed to reach a certain parameter of beyond repairability. In the state of Florida, typically if 25% of your roof has physical damage due to the peril from wind, it would be a full replacement because in Florida, most people of a large majority would have replacement coverage. And as long as you meet this minimum requirement of 25% of repairability factor, then the insurance company deems that the roof needs to be fully tore off and replaced. What happens if the damage is not covered per se by insurance? Is the only the only way fallback position uh, uh, private funds? Uh, private funds, uh, but there's other avenues. You have rights under your policy. One is mediation, um, which is a letter that comes out uh, immediately when you have a claim, whether they, whether they say they're going to give you coverage or not. If you feel you have been underestimated or mishandled by your insurance carrier, you have rights. Um, it's paid for by the insurance company to go to a mediator. I always suggest you bring an expert at that time preferably the contractor that you want to do business with, and ask them if it's even worth the time to do it. Uh, contractors don't want to waste their time either. A good contractor will tell you when you have a good case or not, and not all contractors are created equal. So again, part of the qualifications, and just sit down and have a consultation with the contractor. Most people have a good gut feeling when they say, this guy knows he's going to help me. Um, that's kind of where you have to you know, play it by ear there. Would, um, I'm trying to think, uh, oh shoot. Do you offer seniors discounts? We do. Um, we are a veteran owned company as well. One of my managing partners okay. is uh, a, a veteran, a Marine. Uh, therefore, we respect to the highest level the efforts of our men and women serving our country. So we do give a discount for that, and we do give discounts for seniors. Uh, the discounts are based on whether or not it's repairs and or roofing, but absolutely, we, we know that there's financial hardships sometimes as you get older, and we don't want to make it, we want to lighten the blow as much as possible for them. Since you're a general contractor also, have, have you considered or do you talk to homeowners about the use of, if they own a home, of a reverse mortgage simply just to fix the roof and repair the roof? I have brought that up to people. I am not well versed in that particular program. Uh, we do offer financing, and in a lot of cases, some of the best financing options come from home equity lines. The rates are very low, and in a lot of cases, uh, our senior customers have equity in their homes. It's a great way to take advantage of low rates, especially right now before the Fed raises the interest rates. Uh, it's almost like getting free money at this time. I'm going to have Kay call you and give you the name of Barbara McIntyre, who is our home equity loan specialist, because we know that she has helped so many people from uh, her contacts here on the television and the radio show, because uh, the way she's able to help people uh, just take out what they need and get fixed and 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 it doesn't really destroy them or doesn't uh, hurt them too badly but there are ways that you're right uh, like all roofers are not equal all home equity people are not the same Correct. and we need to do a lot better job of, of figuring out what, what we can do um, one thing one one of the questions you had was talking about roof maintenance uh, Yes. Uh, do you have a contract or you provide that kind of a service for people? We do. Um, and again, most people do not have the ability or have the desire to climb on their roofs. It's dangerous. It is dangerous. Uh, <laughs> ladder incidents are huge. 
uh, for injuries. Uh, we prefer our customers not climb on their roofs. Call him before <laughs> you call on a roof, folks, believe me. Um, we do recommend to get on some kind of maintenance program. We offer it. Uh, it's fairly low cost uh, for you know per year. Every house is different. Um, it, it could range anywhere from $99 to $199 for an overview of the roof every year. That would include caulking, little you know flashings, things that we see, giving a, a small overview of what you have, clean out the gutters for you, which is a nice service because you probably have the neighbor kid trying to do it anyways. But um, at least it keeps you in the knowing of whether or not you're getting close to the life cycle of your roof. And that's another question that comes up is, you know, I, I, I bought this 30 year shingle. Why, why do I need it at 18 years? Why are you telling me I need this? What a lot of people neglect to understand is when a product is developed, it is not developed for one location. It is developed for a, a group or a mass area in this case, the entire United States or even global. Asphalt shingles are petroleum based. They're, they're, the biggest problem it has is we dilapidation from UV deterioration, which is the sun. We live in an environment that is unique to the rest of the country. So when the engineers are developing this, they're assuming that you have an offset for winter, which there is very low UV, therefore low deterioration. When you live in a, uh, a location like us, more tropical, where we have sun 12 months a year, you expedite the amount of dilapidation. So a 30 year shingle in Indiana, for instance, that has four seasons is going to last 30 years because that's what they are marketing it for. When okay. you live in Florida, we, we, we're going to cut that down. Now the insurance companies and most inspections that we do, we use 20 years on, a, on an asphalt petroleum based product. We're way over. We're going to cut it. But okay. I want to ask the viewers, if you got a question, call Kay at the office, 473-7770 if you have a question for Tom about roofing. We'll be back for another edition, but thank you for watching today. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would have welcomed your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.